Bonjour, mon petit internet. Et mes très belles créatures de... <laughs> of the beyond, whatever. I don't know how to say it in French. Um, so, I have watched Napoleon Bonaparte, the 2023 version. And I did like it. It's a fantastical movie visually. Uh, the acting is quite superb. Um, the settings are breathtaking. And you all expect that but. And there is a huge but. <laughs> Don't take this movie as a historical documentary. It's nothing but that. It's it's literally a large majority of what we see in the movie is either inaccurate or fantasy made up basically <sighs> a, a lot of the things are not okay so don't, don't take it as a historical uh, uprising and campaign of napoleon bonaparte i believe that uh, Joaquin uh, Phoenix is actually a very good actor and he played the role fantastically. Unfortunately, I don't think this is his fault because Ridley Scott, he is very good at um, presenting uh, very impactful movies. But it's all just presentation. It's It's... Very, the, the man cannot write a good character for the life of him. Um, he has good cinematography, but lately most of the movies where he directed alone or had uh, other supporting uh, directors around him, his characters suck. <laughs> And I'm not saying that uh, the way uh, Jacquin played the role uh, sucked because he did a formidable job, but the way he was forced to play uh, Napoleon was unfortunately very off because most of the time we see him in the 20-year period where he's presented from his youth uh, up to later on uh, in his campaigns as being quite rigid, quite uh, awkward at times, uh, cynical, and that is true for the later part of his life. But in his youth, he was very charismatic, he was a great oratory, he really inspired people, he gathered a lot of people around him, he was admired, and I don't know, it, it, it was obviously a part of his youth that is not there present in the movie at all and that's a big shame because that is what made napoleon grow we see him from an unpolished uh, well general growing to becoming a consul and then an emperor so it's it's sadly missing. Uh, the love story was interesting as well, but again, it was kind of the, on the nose. Like Napoleon did love Josephine, but he never prioritized Josephine in his life over France, and that is because, well, Napoleon had a lot of failed relationships. And the one with Josephine was kind of the only one that really worked out for him. He really cared for her deeply, although she also cheated on, her, on him. But then again, he also cheated on her many, many, many times. So it was kind of the norm back then for, <laughs> for, uh, for these individuals. But anyway, the point is that his uh, return to France and so on were never... Uh, driven by Josephine's reaction towards him or anything that Josephine was doing. Uh, he really loved his country. He was a patriot. 
to his country, maybe too much, people say. He was seen as a hero in his country, outside of the country he was seen as a villain, but he was very feared because he truly created this war machine that was extremely difficult to, to counter. He was a good uh, strategic uh, commander. And there are many things that are very brushed over in this movie that kind of hurts, you know, because it really doesn't bring the essence of why Napoleon grew to, to grasp his power and didn't really showcase uh, his true ambitions and how dedicated he was. Sure, we have glimpses of that here and there, but everything feels like all the time rushed. Everything that's outside of the uh, campaign side, that we, we don't see him strategizing a lot. We just see him kind of telling us, ah, he's going to win or he's going to lose. But... I don't know. It just didn't hit the mark. Now, there are other movies uh, of Napoleon out there that I believe did a better job than this movie. Not visually. Visually, it's unparalleled. But uh, from the perspective of acting and uh, storytelling, well, I'll show you a few examples. If you really want to see a beautiful love story of Napoleon and Josephine, then there is this small mini-series called Napoleon and Josephine a uh, Love Story uh, and has uh, Armand Asante and uh, Jacqueline Bisset, which are fantastic uh, actors. And this is done in 1987. A very beautiful drama. Uh, then you have a more classical one, which is Napoleon from 1927, which is a silent movie. Uh, this is very artistic. Obviously, it's silent. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's very impactful. I don't know. It, it's, it's a cult classic, so go for it. And then you have, in my opinion, a much better version than Napoleon 2023, which is uh, the 2002 series, which has, I think, four episodes or three. I can't remember. Um, and uh, we have uh, people like uh, Christian uh, Clavier, Isabel Rossellini, Gerard Departie. Ah, I always mess up his name, Gerard Departie, uh, and John Malkovich, which are all fantastic cast. Obviously, this one doesn't uh, fully cover all of his campaigns and so on, but uh, because this also kind of focuses more on his uh, personal life, but he, they did it quite well, and they stick to the historical facts. They don't integrate things that didn't exist or didn't happen. <laughs> uh, that's not to say that 20, the 2023 version is, uh, is bad. It does have some good moments. But unfortunately, they cramped in so much. 20 years is a large period to cramp in a two and a half hours movie. And they said they have a four hour version or more than that. I don't know. And they will release it eventually. And it does show like some parts are really cut off. Like they don't even explain why uh, he is in, uh, in Egypt. Although he did fight also in Syria and so on. He lost some campaigns there because uh, he was there in the interest of uh, trade and uh, scientific discovery. But again, many things were very fastly brushed off and... It's sad because the historical figure is, if you really look at the document documentaries out there and really read about him, you'll find out that uh, there was so much to this man and he achieved so much in 20 years. He made France from a poor country into a, an expanding um, empire, basically. He, he was stepping in the foots of uh, Caesar and Alexander the Great. So 
he knew what he wanted. He he grasped the idea that he wanted to bring France to a whole other level. Of course, towards the end of his life, uh, well, he became a bit more reckless. Maybe his enemies uh, also learned most of his tactics. Uh, he also had a campaign where he lost fair and square to uh, to his enemies. He at one point the entire uh, um, European uh, countries turned against him, including uh, Russia, and they allied all together against him. But he ho- he held strong. He he was very very smart, and he was doing this war dance between uh, England and. Uh, Prussia and Russia and uh, all the all of these crazy places, you know, and um, his continent was spanning from Spain up to the borders of uh, of Russia. And though he did have some a few very devastating uh, losses, he had about sixty or something campaigns that. Uh, he devastated the enemies. Sometimes he even won wars in one single campaign, which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> what I found interesting is that uh, at the end of the movie, they say, well, he said uh, three words at the end of this movie. Maybe it's one of the endings they presented and they have more. But actually, he said four words at the end of, uh, of his life. Uh, in the movie, they say uh, France, Army, and Josephine. But in uh, in his uh, well, from the historical sources, we know that he said uh, France, Armée, Tête d'Armée, and Josephine, which basically means France, Army, the head of the army, which are the generals, and Josephine. So Josephine was last on his. Uh, on his list, on his top four. <laughs> but that's kind of said the generals are missing in uh, in uh, in this movie because Napoleon didn't win the war based on his knowledge alone. He had his uh, loyal generals he always fought with. One of his sons also was also a general. Um, and he was quite good, but eventually he retired. And they don't present that at all. Uh, they don't present that connection between him and the army. How, Why the country liked him. Why the army liked him. There was one point where he returns from exile, uh, from his first exile. And uh, he meets one of the regiments that was waiting there to counteract him. And he says, like, I have returned, and everybody starts laughing. And then he says something like, he shows his emblem on his chest and says, like, he's here for them, and he doesn't want to fight them. And then everybody just accepts him and joins his uh, efforts and overthrows the the king that was currently placed in uh, him, basically. So yeah, it it was kind of like mm, yeah, not not so great, not so great. He didn't hit those marks. But if you're just going in there and looking at this just as a fantasy piece, yeah, it's nice, it's beautiful, but definitely not a historical piece. It's it's missing so many marks that it's laughable. I would say. 40% is kind of historical fact, 60% of the movie is just artistic representation. <laughs> Still, not a bad movie. Check it out. Also, check the other versions of Napoleon, which I believe that do Napoleon better justice than this movie, but still, all in all, a nice experience. Okay, guys, catch you next time. Stay awesome, and bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.